Okay, so not long ago, I made my first wormhole tunnel in Blender. Since then, I've made a small collection of these using different lighting and some different features. I was so excited to complete it, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button if you wanna see more videos like these. My first step was finding a really good tutorial that would show me everything that I needed to do step by step. So I found Blender 2.8 Upside Down Tunnel Animation Tutorial, and it totally helped my workflow. Kev Binge makes amazing, super in-depth tutorials. I'll link his video in the description. You should definitely check it out. After opening Blender, first I deleted the cube, and now I'm going to go under the Add drop-down menu, click on Curve, and add a circle. Now on the bottom left-hand corner where it says Add Bezier Curve, we're going to change the radius to four. Now we're gonna click on Camera, then go down to Object Constraints, and we're going to add Follow Path. From here, select the target, and our target is going to be the Bezier Circle. Then you want to click Animate Path. When you hit play, your camera will now be rotating around the circle. Now we're gonna hit Alt-R and then Alt-G. It will turn your camera down and then attach it to the inside of your circle. Now you're gonna wanna go back to camera and same as before, we're going to add the constraint Follow Path to Bezier Circle. All right, so now we're going to add an empty, and this empty is going to be Plane Axis. Now that you see that it's added on the right-hand corner, you're going to go up and rename it Target. Now click on Target, and we're going to add a constraint, Follow Path, to Bezier Circle. And now the target will be right on top of your camera. Now you wanna click back on your target and we're going to offset it just a little bit. We're gonna do like negative 12. And then we're going to click on camera and add another constraint. We're going to add track two. Under track two, we're going to click target and this time it's going to be tracking to target. And then go back up and hit animate path. Now when you press play, it should look a little bit something like this. Now if you want to make the animation last longer, you're going to add more frames. So on the bottom, you can change the end point to, let's do 500. We're also gonna to have to change the frames under Bezier Circle. So click on Bezier Circle, go down to the green curve symbol, click on Path Animation, and change the frames to 500 there too. We're also gonna change the evaluation. The larger the number, the slower it'll go. So we're going to change it to, let's say 121. I tried 437, but it was way too slow. Now I'm gonna go back to my target and I'm going to offset it, like a lot more. Let's do negative 40 and we'll see where it lands. The goal is for my camera to be following my target and my target to be in front of my camera. Awesome, so now we have the base down and we are gonna get to deform the circle or the path. So now switch to edit mode on the top left hand corner and these four lines will pop up on your circle. They're really access points, but it really helps to see the line there. Select it and click G to be able to move it around. And if you want it to be more interesting than just an oval, you can go up to Segments at the top and click Subdivide. And then you'll have uh, more options to make it wavier and to do more with it. 
Remember, select it and then click G. You can do this for as many of the accesses as you want. Now once you're satisfied with its form, you can press play, and now the camera will be following this new path. Okay, so now let's go up to Bezier Circle, and we're just going to rename it Camera Path. Then we're going to copy and paste it, and we're going to make this new Bezier Circle our tunnel, so rename it Tunnel. Now we're going to go down to the bottom here, next to the green curve symbol, you're going to click on Bevel, and we're going to change the depth. This will change the thickness of the tunnel. Just play around with it until you're happy with the thickness. And now we'll go to Camera View to look at it from inside. Now I couldn't figure out how to do this at first because I don't have a numpad. So if you're like me and you don't have a numpad on your computer, you're going to click on view, scroll down to camera, and then you're going to click active camera. And this will take you to what the camera will look like inside of the tunnel. You can see that the target is in front of the camera leading the way. Now let's add some texture. We're going to zoom out. Make sure tunnel is selected. And now we're going to go up to the top to object, click object, go down to convert, and we're going to convert to mesh. Now switch to edit mode on the top left hand corner. And then we're going to go back down next to the blue wrench, add modifier, subdivision surface. Now we're going to change the render to three and the levels to four. Now let's switch back to camera view and then we're going to add another modifier. And this time we're going to add displace. Now here you can click new and change the texture. Click on the bottom checkered square and under type, you'll be able to see a lot of built-in options for textures. Play around with them and choose the one you like the best. To see this change, you're going to want to change it to object mode. I'll go through a bunch of these so that you can see how they look. The first one was cloud. This one's magic. This one is marble. Here's musgrave. Noise. I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but Stussy. Voronoi, and wood. I'm gonna go ahead and use magic. Now you can go ahead and change the way this looks by changing the depth. The higher the depth, the more compact it'll be. The lower the depth, the more sparse it'll be. If we switch back to clouds, you'll see that now there's a size option right above depth. If you make the size larger, the design spreads out. Now we can go back up to View, Cameras, Active Camera, and now when you press play, you'll be able to go through the tunnel. Now I really did like Magic better, so let's change it to Magic and see what happens. Okay, this looks pretty cool, but it's not exactly what I wanted to go for. I wanted to go for something that looked kind of like an artery or an ear hole, something like you're moving within the body. Okay, Stussy looks a little bit more like it. Let's try one more and see if it's even better. I'm gonna try Veroni. Ooh, okay, I really like this texture. I think this is the one I'm gonna go with. Now if I want to see it a little bit further back, I'm going to change the lens size. Go to Camera and then lens and let's change it to a 24 millimeter 
Okay, I like this more. I feel like I can see more of it and it's more zoomed out. Now, I'm not even gonna bother doing any kind of shader, shader smooth, none of that. If you want to learn how to do shading, check out Kev Binge's tutorial that I have in my description. I'm already pretty satisfied with how it is, so I'm gonna go straight to lighting. Exit camera view by zooming out, click add, light, point, because we're going to want our light in a concentrated area. Now on the bottom here, we're going to add a constraint to follow path, and the target will be camera path. So for this project, I want it to look like there is a light that we are following, and then it's going to also be lit up from the back. So we're going to have to offset it a little bit, but we want to probably get into camera view first so that we can actually see what it looks like. So go ahead and click render view at the top right hand corner. And now as I change the offset, you can actually see it in real time. The more I offset it, the further up the light's going. And remember, I'm always offsetting negative because that's going to be in front of the camera. If I change it to one, you can see how dim it gets. And then I'll change it to negative four. And then you can see how the light is like a little bit more in front. Now, if you want to change the color of this point light, you're going to go down to the green light bulb on the bottom right hand corner. Click on color, and now you can just play around and see what you like best. Since I want this one to look kind of like a vessel, I'm going to leave it red. Now I'm going to change it back to white light to make it neutral, and I'm going to show you the difference in intensity. Though you could really do this while it's colored too. Alright, so we're going to change the power. And when I turn the power up, you're going to see that there's a lot more light. Okay, so now we're going to duplicate or copy and paste this light so that we now have two lights. And now you see we have point and point zero zero. Now let's go ahead and name the first light front light and the bottom light back light. And now with the backlight, I'm going to change the offset setting so that it is much more ahead of my camera. Let's just try positive five. And then I'm going to change the color so that you can see where it is. I might have to lower the front light a little bit in intensity or in power so that you can actually see this one. But let's just go ahead and change the lighting of the front light as well. Now I'm also going to change the offset to about negative two and see how that looks. It looks like it's a little bit closer to the camera so I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to change the color of this front light. I think I'm also just going to make this one red. Oh, that was cool. With the intensity of it, it's so bright that it gets yellow in areas where it's hitting a really close mass. Remember to always save your work. I'm pretty happy with this, so I think I'm done and I'm going to show you how to render it out. So I screen recorded the render video <laughs> way later than the previous video so I've already gone ahead and changed some of the lighting so you can see a huge contrast now all right so if you want to render you're going to go to the right hand side to this little print button you can add a folder to where you want this to go or your desktop you'll definitely want to make sure you know where it's going now under file format you want to make sure you click on FFmpeg video, otherwise it'll just render a whole bunch of PNGs. Now under container, since I want this to be a video, I'm going to go with mpeg4. And I'm not going to change any of the other settings. Now you can go on the top left hand corner, hit render, and make sure to render animation. This little screen will pop up and it's going to take a while you're just going to see it kind of glitching frame by frame, but it's going to be putting it together. After this, you'll see a video pop up in the file you set it to. I hope this video helps. 
If it does, make sure to like this video to help it get out to more people. Thanks for watching Art with Bianca.